Now that I've explained what a reference electrode is, we can see why Felix's study included electrodes over the mastoid processes. They were the reference electrodes. He put one on each side and used the average of the two as the reference. By averaging across the left and right mastoids, he gave equal weight to both hemispheres. But why use the mastoids as the reference? It turns out that there really isn't an ideal place to put the reference electrode, and the mastoids are just a traditional site. To see why there isn't an ideal reference location, we need to think about how ERPs are generated. Here's the pattern of voltage that you'd expect on the scalp for this generator dipole. We have positive on one side of the head and negative on the other side, with a narrow band of zero between the positive and negative sites. Here are our active electrodes at FC, CZ, and PZ. Remember, we can put ground anywhere we want because it gets subtracted out during the referencing process. In an ideal world, we'd have our reference electrodes somewhere on the zero line, as shown here. If we did, then the voltages we record at FC, CZ, and PZ would be the absolute voltages at those sites. But to know where the zero line is, we'd need to know the location and orientation of the generator dipole. If we have two dipoles, there's no single zero line and we usually have at least a dozen dipoles. So in practice, there's just no way to find an electrically neutral location for the reference electrode. The bottom line is that no matter where you put the reference, you're picking up a real signal with the reference electrode and inverting it via the subtraction used by the referencing process. So why do we bother using a reference? As I mentioned before, a reference electrode reduces noise in the recordings. And if we eliminated the reference, we'd still be looking at the difference between active and ground, and any activity at the ground electrode would be inverted in our signal. So what location should be used as the reference? A lot of people use the average of the mastoids or the average of the earlobes. Some people use the tip of the nose. All of these reference locations became popular many decades ago because they seemed like they'd be electrically neutral. But we now know that there is no electrically neutral site. The main value in continuing to use these sites is that consistency makes it easier to compare the results across studies. Another common option is to use the average of all the electrodes as the reference. The idea is that this will get us close to the absolute voltage. However, the average across all our electrodes is not the same as the average over the whole head. How would you get electrodes on the bottom of the head, where the neck is? The average of all sites can be a fine reference, but it's not a magic bullet. The key is to always remember that the active and reference electrodes are equal partners in determining the voltage that we record. So when you see a channel labeled PZ, you're not just looking at the activity from the PZ electrode. You're looking at PZ minus the signal at the reference electrode. As a result, one of the first things I look at when I'm reading an ERP paper is the reference site. Until you know that, you don't really know what you're seeing when you look at the ERPs. Okay, two final points. First, referencing is usually done in hardware, but some EEG systems do it in software. These systems initially save the active to ground and reference to ground signals to the data file, and the data are re-referenced offline in software. This is called single-ended recording. It just gives the researcher a little more control. Second, you can algebraically re-reference the data offline. That's what this N170 study did. They used an EEG recording system that always uses CZ as the reference during the recording. CZ is also called the vertex electrode because it's on the top of the head. They later re-referenced the data to the average of all the sites, which is a common practice when looking at the N170. I hope you'll now be able to read the recording section of an ERP paper and understand what they mean when they talk about the reference and why you need to pay attention to what they used as the reference site.